The read from Ohio Democratic Congressman Tim Ryan, who joins us right now. Congressman, good to have you. Good to be with you, Neil. I'm always interested, sir, when I talk to you or your colleagues, who your guest is tonight. You're all entitled to bring a guest. Who do you have? I'm bringing the head of the local auto worker union of a plant that got closed down. His name is Dave Green, local 1112 in Lordstown, Ohio. And that plant uh, is going to be empty as of March due to all the General Motor job cuts. And so we're bringing him to make sure that uh, the president and everyone else is paying attention about what's happened in Lordstown, Ohio. Now, as you know, on those uh, job cuts here, GM said it had no choice. Up to 4,000 white-collar workers hit as well. Uh, and that uh, this is a way of keeping the company, you know, viable and vibrant. What it, when you heard Mary Bauer, the CEO, say that, what did you think? Well, I, I've talked to her on several occasions, and we're still trying to work because they may uh, distribute some products uh, after the union contracts are negotiated, and we're fighting real hard to make sure one of those products ends up in Lordstown, Ohio. But I think it's more indicative of what's happening in the economy today, uh, Neil. We saw a little bit of this with the government shutdown, where working class families literally cannot survive losing one paycheck, where 45% of the country have less than $400 in savings. And it's been a failure, really, on both parties' parts to plug in communities and families in areas of the country that have missed globalization, missed automation. It passed us by. And because there's been no national industrial policy or no national strategy on how we make sure the Youngstown, Ohio's of the world and the Gary, Indiana's of the world and, and many parts of the southern part of this country get plugged in. Globalization is yielding great wealth, but it's not getting everywhere. It's getting concentrated in certain parts of the country. I've said it before on your show, 80% of venture capital goes to three states, California, New York, and Massachusetts. Well, how do we have a national strategy that gets those investments in to communities like ours in the salt and the wound? Lastly, is that when General Motors makes these cuts, uh, people lose their jobs, communities erode, their stock goes up 6%. I mean, that to me is well, not an economic model. But the president is model. going to apparently mention infrastructure and that kind of thing that could benefit some yeah. of those workers. Or Would you be for something like that? There does seem to be broad bipartisan <laughs> appeal. Yeah, absolutely. I've been waiting for the president to push a legitimate uh, infrastructure bill uh, since he's gotten to office. In fact, I saw uh, Steve Bannon and Kellyanne Conway the night of the inauguration, and, and uh, we talked uh, on, the, on the dais right after his speech. And I said, let's do infrastructure. Let's find a way to get together on this stuff. It would be critically important. But it goes well beyond that. I mean, there's an article today in the Washington Post about 5G. China's kicking our rear end on 5G, and it has defense and military implications. These are the kind of the lead, this is the leadership we need from the White House on how we grow the these areas of the economy. Those issues in the trade talks with China. I mean, you're not lumping all this on his door, so because last time I checked, the economy is doing pretty well. I, I understand in your district and some of the concerns about that, but by and large, we're in and out of record low unemployment. We got three hundred four thousand jobs in the latest period. Wages going up at better than a 3% clip for four months in a, in a row. That's a, that's a pretty good direction, right? Well, Neil, I, I would just say, look, I, I think the old metrics uh, aren't applicable to what's happening in the world today. I mean, it, there are so many communities in America that are being left behind, people that don't have money in the stock market, people that are working part-time or two well, or three so jobs to make ends meet. those particular metrics, Congressman, are better than they were under Barack Obama. Those, those examples I stated now. So were they okay when the same thing was happening or worse under Barack no, Obama? No. And not and, now and, because it's Donald Trump. No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get into that Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, but Donald Trump. I'm caring about my people. I'm just saying, Neil, both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party has failed to address the structural problems in the United States economy. Fair enough, because a lot and, of your presidential candidates of the party, and I, I, I don't, you might stand out because for now you're not one of them, but uh, they are advocating things like a wealth tax, a higher estate tax, to address this and other things. Uh, do you like that approach? I think we need more progressivity in our tax code. There's no question about it. We have a trillion dollar deficit next year in, in the years to come. Uh, that's a problem. We've got huge infrastructure so needs in the United States. So what's progressivity to you? Would it be beyond the 37% top rate we're at now? And if so, to what well, level? I, 
I, I'm not going to sit here and negotiate a tax policy with you. I'm saying we have Feel a free. highest conscience. <laughs> I'm sure everybody would start turning off their TV. Yeah. But <laughs> um, my, my point is we have the highest level of income inequality and the highest concentration of wealth that we've had since the Great Depression. Now, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, whether you're rich or you're middle class, with trillion dollar deficits and investments that we need to make and China pumping 5G and clean energy and rebuilding their military and going into Africa for raw materials, we don't have a strategy. No, you and make a gonna... compelling case, Congress. The people can agree or disagree on some of the details, but it's a moderate, thoughtful case. Uh, would you consider running for president? Your name's been bandied about. <clears throat> yes, yes, I will, and I have, and I am, and uh, I'm having conversations Wait a right minute, you now. You are, you are definitely going to run for president. No, I didn't say that. I am considering. Uh, that was good, though. Oh. Neil, you're good at this. Just... You're good at this. Um, so what are you there, considering? There, there are uh, running, and and okay. there are some, there are some serious. Problems when I when I look wait, at wait, wait, it, no, wait a minute it, when you say it, you're seriously considering running when were you going to make up your mind and what do you, what, what's holding you back now? Well, I'm still looking at it, uh, and I, I don't have a time frame just yet. But you know, when I, when I sit and I see what's happening in our schools, I see what's happening with our economy, I see what China is doing. I sit on the defense appropriations so you're subcommittee. So you in the crowded field very, doesn't yeah. dissuade you, right? It doesn't dissuade you. No, at all. no, no. Mm -hmm. I, and I think the more ideas we have out there, the better. And the one thing I will just say, Neil, that you can say it's it's moderate, it's conservative, it's liberal. As Americans. We need to recognize that we are in a very stiff competition with China, and they are using the entire uh, government that they have, right. their economic system, their educational research infrastructure, military, everything, okay. to take over Asia and to displace the United States. And we live in a 24-hour news cycle that is not addressing this issue. And I'm very, very concerned about it because right. uh, we'll get so far behind, we may not be able to catch back up. You mentioned the 24-hour news cycle. If you do make up your mind and, and announce you are running for president, I hope you stop by here. We'd love to have you. You're and on I the mean list. first. I don't want you to start doing like the Cartoon Network and then you get around <laughs> me. All right. Um, Thanks, Dan. Congressman, thank you very, very much. Very interesting. So we could have thank a you. presidential aspirant in our midst to make it 10. Well, the two are not the same. The national emergency is because he believes that we have a crisis on the southern border and the Congress has failed to do his job. Well, there's been much speculation that the president will declare a national emergency over the border crisis during tonight's State of the Union. All right, joining us to discuss what he wants to hear during that address and if the president will declare a national emergency, South Carolina Congressman Ralph Norman, thank you so much for coming on, sir. Um, My pleasure. You still got time to negotiate this thing, and, and you've got some good people that are trying to make a deal uh, with 10 days left. What do you think the president says tonight? Well, I think it'll be a mixed uh, message. One, reminding people when he took office what he inherited. Two, I think he will go over his accomplishments, the economy, uh, what he's done with our standing in, in the world with other countries, with our trade agreements. And the fact that he's delivered on every promise that he said that he, he promised when he took office. Uh, and I think he'll call for bipartisanship. Uh, and really, when you look at uh, what he's asking for with the border, the funding of the wall is, 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 should be a, an issue that all of us agree on. Uh, we went with nine other congressmen to the border. All you have to do is go to the border and see what's happening to know that it is a national crisis. Uh, the caravans are not waiting. They're coming. And so I think he will call for that. If, if the Democrats continue to waver and say they're not giving the money for the wall, then I think we gotta, we're going to have a stalemate. Let me ask you, what type of tone would you like to see and hear from the president tonight? Because oftentimes some of the tone in his tweets with the capital letters and the length of the tweets and stuff, that's oftentimes what gets people talking. So how do you want this approach to be? Well, I think you'll have a contrast, Jilly, and I think when you'll see a scowling Nancy Pelosi in the background. <laughs> And I think you'll see the president upbeat, as he should be. I think he will have a strong message. Yet it, the message will have boundaries because, and the, with the boundary being, we're going to get the funding for the wall. He can't back up on that, nor should he. So uh, I think it'll be an upbeat message. And what's not to be upbeat in this country now? And I think you'll see with the Democratic message, 
uh, theirs will be one of doom and gloom, of being a victim and, and how bad things are in this country. It will definitely be a contrast. And, and you don't think that he declares the emergency tonight? You, you think that he lets this go and, and sees where the negotiation goes? Yeah, he's got 10 more days, yeah. and I think uh, the 15th. And you've got to remember, Rob, that the Democrats have not put forward anything that they will agree to. Uh, this president has laid it out there. He's done what they wanted in opening the government back up. And so uh, it's, it's on their backs to put something in writing and something on the table for yeah. the American people to look at. We've heard uh, a number of sound bites from Democrats in this hour anyway, and one in particular, I believe it was Maxine Waters, correct me if I'm wrong, saying just turn off the TV, don't even watch it uh, to the public. What do you make of hearing something like that? It's the State of the Union. Well, it's, you know, it's, uh, that's par for the course with her, Jillian, and I wouldn't be surprised. I, I tell people in South Carolina, be sure and watch uh, the State of the Union tonight because nothing that the Democrats do will surprise me if they boo, if they turn their backs on him. This president's tough, and uh, he's seen this before, so I think, again, you'll see a contrast, and the American people will see uh, what these Democrats stand for, and again, you're going to see a scowling Nancy Pelosi in the background. Yeah, I, I, was, I can't wait to see uh, how, how she's looking there uh, during, during this speech. Uh, let's pull up some graphics here to show you the guests uh, for Speaking this speech contrast. tonight. Yeah, exactly. Uh, from the Democrats, uh, if we can pull it up here, uh, we have an activist uh, who protested against the Kavanaugh nomination. That was the woman that went in and, uh, and, and got Jeff Flake in the elevator. Uh, you've got uh, a Guatemalan woman who was fired from Trump's uh, golf club who was living in the U.S. illegally and other people. Let's pull up the uh, Republican side of this if we can here. And you'll notice uh, towards the bottom there, number three, uh, is the sector chief for the Rio Grande Valley Border Patrol. Uh, it's interesting to hear Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer criticize the president constantly for not listening to the experts. These experts, DHS Border Patrol, say they need barriers and walls, and Pelosi and Schumer ignore them. What do you think of that? Well, again, they just haven't been to the border. When we went with the nine other congressmen, it was interesting that they hadn't seen any of the congressmen there in the years. Many of them had been, had been uh, agents for 20 years. And we had one, the last day we were there, a uh, illegal crossed the fence and escaped, and they caught him right before our eyes. Their comment was, let's see if a drone will catch this illegal that we physically just caught. So, uh, you know, they, you're talking about the president. The president gets advice from people who actually are doing the work uh, as it relates to the border wall. The Democrats just won't do that, nor will they meet with angel moms, which we met with, who had lost loved ones. And to see their faces when they talk about their loved ones who had, had, had died was, was amazing and it was moving. Yeah. yeah. Congressman, so thank you so much. Thank you for your time. My pleasure.